Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Jesus Quesadilla and welcome back to Let's Play Saints Row 4. Um, we're right where we left off in the previous episode. If you guys were able to catch that one, then you will know that we uh, acquired a new superpower, Telekinesis. And uh, we also helped the uh, AI within the, within the computer simulation uh, get a new body, just a little robot body so we can go around and help us out. And uh, he's going to enable us to access the alternate simulations that some of our friends are trapped in. And the first person we're looking to rescue today is apparently Matt Miller. So why don't we go ahead and load up that mission and see if we can't help Matt Miller escape. Wait, mind over murder? Okay, well, I thought we were helping Matt Miller break out. Is that, does that have something to do with him? It doesn't seem like it. It sounds like the name of a game show. It's like, murder time, fun time. Oh wait, could this be like the new Professor Genki game? Because I know I've seen Professor Genki stuff throughout the game. Um, you know, just like cameos and stuff like that when the uh, Genki statue came with the rocket launcher back when we were in the 50s universe. Um, but I was really hoping that there'd be a new Professor Genki game because uh, Murder Time Fun Time was one of my favorite little diversions back in Saints Row the Third. So if there's a new Genki game, I'm sure it's going to be tons of fun. I guess maybe we aren't in that big a rush to save Matt Miller. We still have time to fuck around for a little bit. That's fun. I totally don't mind that. Or maybe it's just a new way to break in our telekinesis power because I still want to learn how to use that a little bit more effectively. So that'd be nice if it gives us a chance to kind of try it out a bit more. Um, okay, let's do this. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh my god, this is the best thing ever. Okay. Hey, Professor Genki, how's it going? My favorite cat in the whole world. Okay, I get it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Fuck yeah. So glad this guy's back in the game. They could seriously just make a Professor Genki game all by themselves. In fact, I hope that's what Saints Row 5 is. I hope it's just, uh, completely Professor Genki related. Like, Professor Genki tries to urse up me as ruler of the universe, and I have all-out wars against Professor Genki and his legions of, uh, different mascots and stuff like that. That'd be kind of cool. Or if not a full game, then just a DLC expansion where we have to combat against Professor Genki. Um, Murder Brawl was definitely one of my favorite DLCs back in Saints Row the Third. Um, actually, all three of the DLCs, the uh, major content add-ons for that game, were all equally fun, but Murder Brawl was definitely one of my favorites. Alright, so it seems like since we're on a timer here, maybe the best thing to do would just be to ignore the mascots. Um, since we're super powered, we don't really have to worry about them anyway, because they're just shooting regular bullets at us. And we got another target area? Okay, let's go ahead and take care of stuff over there, I kind of figured. Um, but this seems like it's pretty interesting, okay. Also, I'm really glad to see that the announcers are back. I know I'm not really listening to them right now, because I'm kind of rushing around to complete this stuff. But, uh, let's go ahead and throw this guy through the ring. Um, but I'm glad to see that they brought the same announcers back, because that was definitely one of the things that really made Murder Time Fun Time really great, was just how hilariously over-the-top the announcers were. Alright, let's... I, I think the best strategy is probably to do the Genki circles first, because it's harder to find a Professor Genki head than it is to find a person to throw, because there's tons of enemies all around that I can throw through the, uh, through the green rings. Actually, maybe the, the blue rings are the ones I should worry about first, because the cars seem to be, uh a little more sporadic but all right we got one more area to go to this is pretty easy i think that when it comes to the uh old telekinetic powers i'm just a born natural i seem to be really picking up on it really quickly um that's actually one of my favorite superpowers actually how have i not asked this already so guys i know that this game is really centric on superpowers but if in real life you could have any one superpower what would it be and why um, for me, telekinesis is pretty high up on that list, but before telekinesis, I'd probably say either invisibility or invincibility, one or the other. Um, or both, if I could have it that way. But, um, what are some of your favorite superpowers? What do you think would be the most useful in real life? Um, hell, if you want to come up with a superhero persona, I don't really give a shit, but, you know, let me know what your favorite superpower is, because I'd be curious to know. I always get into these, uh, arguments with my friends over what superpower would be the most effective or which one would win a fight most times and um i think that invisibility it's the easiest one to uh, get out of fights with because if you're ever losing a battle you can just slap on your invisibility and you know duck out of the way and hopefully escape 
Um, invincibility, of course, I think is probably one of the more popular choices because, as the name would suggest, you can't be killed, so you can't really lose a fight. Which, actually, I'm a pretty big believer in that. I think that's why uh, Wolverine is one of my favorite superheroes, just because his regenerative ability, that's definitely something that I would want to have if I could choose what superpower I got. Or I guess his is more of a mutation, but in any case. Um, I actually saw the new Wolverine movie that came out a little while ago. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm sure I probably mentioned that, but they played on the, uh, the whole adamantium samurai thing, which is pretty cool. They had it set in Japan, which, you know, anything set in Japan, I'm bound to love. Them's my people. But yeah, I went to go see the new Wolverine movie with some of my friends a while back, and we all really enjoyed it. It was a whole lot of fun. Um, honestly, I'm not super into the X-Men or anything like that. I do particularly like Wolverine, especially the, uh, the Hugh Jackman depiction of Wolverine. I'm really into that. I think he does a phenomenal job in the role. But, um, it was a really fun movie, and I kind of just went into it not with really expectations about the story or anything like that. Because, I mean, with most superhero movies, you can't really expect this, you know, triple-A storyline, unless it's, like, The Dark Knight or something like that. But it ended up being a lot better than I expected, and the action segments were fucking fantastic. Um, you know, I, I love superhero movies where the superpower is something... I don't want to say realistic, because superpowers in and of themselves aren't realistic, but I like superpowers that, uh, you know, aren't super broken. Like, Superman, I don't know, is just too cheesy and his powers are too over the top. Um, with Wolverine, it's, it's kind of more in the realm of believability, and it doesn't make him so overpowered to the point where you would ever think that he can't ever lose. Um, I mean, in the movie, there's several instances where he needs to be saved. And I know a lot of that has to do with the fact that the plot of the movie is that he's losing his power. Um, but I, I like, I guess my point is I like seeing heroes that show some weakness. Um, just because that's a little bit more relatable, I think. I don't like superhero movies where the hero is never really in any threat. And you're kind of aware of that fact. With the new Wolverine movie, you pretty much knew the entire time that, that at any moment uh, his superpowers could finally run out or be drained from him or whatever and that that would leave him open to get his ass kicked. And actually, while we were at the movie theater, uh, th that was kind of funny. We were debating whether we should see Wolverine or if we should see the, uh, the Steve Jobs movie with Ashton Kutcher. And, um, I don't know what it is. I would actually like to see a Steve Jobs biopic. I think that's a really cool idea. But Ashton Kutcher is just one of those actors that I've never liked him in anything. Well, I, I liked him in that 70s show, but then again, he didn't really have a standout character in that show. He wasn't, like, the reason why I like that 70s show. But that's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head that I actually enjoyed him in, even remotely. Look, you sound just like Julius Little. Putting a guy who betrayed you in the number two slot seems like a great way to get killed. I'm nothing like Julius. Oh, Julius. Fond memories of Saints Row. You know, I didn't realize how many uh, references they'd be making to the older games in this one. It's kind of nice. Because um, I've played all three of the previous Saints Rows, and I can already tell that if you haven't, you're probably going to have a lot of this stuff, you know, go over your head. But I'm definitely catching on a lot of these little references to uh, old characters from the previous games. I never thought they'd talk about Julius ever again, honestly. Oh god, I'm remembering why I hate this guy so much. Why are we saving him? Oh, he was such a pain in the ass in Saints Row the Third. But you know what? Bygones are bygones. Oh, cool. We're back in, like, the Tron universe. That was the one thing I loved about Matt Miller was the, uh, the final battle that you did with him. You had to go into, like, this Tron landscape uh, back in Saints Row the Third. It looked a lot like this, actually, so that was definitely probably one of my favorite levels in the game. Glad that we get to return and do something similar. Oh, hey, tank battle. Sweet. Okay, let's do this. God, those console prompts at the top of the screen are actually making it really hard for me to see. I think I have the contrast turned up too high on my computer or something. Because uh, that's actually blocking out quite a bit of the screen. That's kind of annoying. Uh, oh my god, bikes. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Oh, I can just run them over. Okay, that's easier. I may just do that because it seems like my shots are like going around them or over their head or something. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just run into them. That's working a lot better. You know, that's one thing I will say about this game, is that, um, I wasn't too keen on the whole virtual simulation thing until I realized that that really opens up a lot of possibilities. Um, with the virtual simulation thing, anything really becomes possible in terms of level design. 
which I think from a creative standpoint is really, really good because it really gives the developers license to create whatever they imagine. Um, they're not really restricted by the rules and limitations of having the game set in the real world. Um, because this is a simulation, they can basically load up any type of level that they want to, and it'll make sense within the context of the story. So that's good. Um, now what? Okay, cool, we're in 3D again. Nice. And I just blow this thing up, right? Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and batter through this thing. This reminds me so much of that Matt Miller level, good memories. You know, except the part of the level where the game starts to lag on purpose, that was the only annoying thing in that level. Whoever thought that using lag as, like, an actual part of the game was huffing too much paint. Also, I have to say, Zinyak is really like a James Bond villain. He's, like, not really stopping us from doing anything, even though he has the ability to do so. I mean, this is his simulation, so... If he knew we were, like, dangerously close to saving Matt Miller, he could probably just terminate both him and I, for that matter. Um, so I'm really surprised that he doesn't just do that. Um, it's, it, I don't know, like I said, it's like kind of like that James Bond villain type thing where they have the ability to kill James Bond once they have him captured, but they choose not to because, I don't know, I guess it's just more villainous if you leave him on a slowly rolling death machine. Alright. Holy crap, these orange things are popping up everywhere. God damn. Also, I think another reason why I'm really enjoying this game is that so much of it, like, clearly parodies The Matrix. Which, um, The Matrix is one of my favorite movies back when I was younger, when it first came out. Um, I remember my dad got it for us on DVD, and I was just so blown away, because that was the first movie that I think really utilized the bullet time effect in a really good way. Um, when, like, Neo can slow down time and, like, dodge bullets and shit like that. I mean... I remember seeing that as a kid and being in total awe. I must have watched that movie over dozens and dozens of times just to see the action sequences because it was some of the coolest stuff I'd ever seen. And then, um, in the second movie, the fight with all the Agent Smiths in that parkway, um, after Neo meets with the, uh, who was it, the Oracle, I think? Um, I remember that being one of my other favorite action scenes from the Matrix trilogy, too. So, um, this game definitely bringing back a lot of fond memories of that movie. Oh, wait, what? It's a trap? Damn it, I should have known. It's a trap! Zinyak even kind of looks like that guy a little bit. Admiral Akbar. But yeah, all the Matrix references are really cool for someone like me. Um, actually, speaking of Matrix, um, I was just remembering about this the other day. I remember when I was really into the Matrix, I played uh, this old PS2 uh, video game. It might have been out on like the Xbox and the PC also, I think. Um, possibly the GameCube as well, I don't really know. Uh, I played on the PS2, it was called Enter the Matrix, and um, I remember getting that when the uh, second Matrix movie came out, and I was so stoked for it. Um, it was kind of weird though, because you didn't actually play as the main characters, you played kind of as like these offshoot characters. Um, instead of playing as Neo and Trinity or Morpheus or any of those guys, you played as these two people, uh, Naomi and Ghost, I think, who were kind of like side characters that made a couple cameo appearances in the main movie, but were never really all that important. Um, but I remember playing that game, and in hindsight, it was a really terrible game, because I've replayed it recently, and it just does not hold up. But I remember me with my, my beer goggles playing as a kid. Or not beer goggles, but maybe my, like, nostalgia glasses, I don't know what to call them. But I remember playing that game as a kid and just loving the heck out of it. Um, that was back, too, when I actually used a Game Shark for, like, everything. I remember back when I was, like, uh, 10 or 11, I would not play a game if I didn't have Game Shark codes for it. It was actually really bad. I would always throw on, like, infinite health cheats and stuff like that. Really different from the way I play games nowadays, because I kind of like the challenge. And, uh, I always try and look for ways to make games a little bit more challenging if I think they're too easy. But, yeah, as a kid, I'd pretty much just turn on infinite ammo, infinite health, all that good stuff, and just completely destroy the game without even trying. Like, I think the first time that I beat the original Kingdom Hearts, it was using a Game Shark or an Action Replay. God, I remember Action Replays. Uh, basically the same thing as a Game Shark. It was just like this disc you would put in your PS2 before the game started. And you could, like, choose all these, like, cool codes. And not all of them were game-breaking. Like, I mean, you had the obvious stuff like Infinite Health and Magic and Ammo and stuff like that, or Unlock Everything, you know, all the basic stuff. But sometimes you'd have cool stuff like, uh, change the character color or costume or things like that that you wouldn't ordinarily expect. Um, so yeah, there's stuff like speed up the game, slow down the game. Uh, I remember using it for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas as well, actually. I was kind of a little cheater when I when I used to play video games. So that kind of 
It's kind of strange looking back now because I would never do that nowadays. I hate the idea of using a game shark or using cheat codes or stuff like that. Um, well, I mean, cheat codes are fine as long as it doesn't alter the difficulty of the game. I just don't like cheats that make the game too easy. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, no, are you kidding me? Uh, oh god, I can't even get off the bike. What the fuck? What, I, I can't even get off the fuck- Oh god, are you shitting me? What the fuck? I was so close to beating it! You son of a bitch, are you kidding? Oh god damn it! Ugh, screw over by a fucking glitch, seriously? Y you know what, I didn't fail, the game failed. Screw that. Alright, well guys, you know what that means, time to fast forward through this crap, so I'll, uh, see you guys at the end of the race. Okay, guys, it looks like we're in the final stretch here. Let's hope nothing fucks up again. Oh, we're gonna hit a big jump here. Oh, shit. Oh, God, is it just gonna end? Oh, God. Whoa. There's that Borderlands 2 effect again. Hey, this is kind of like The Matrix 2, the second movie, with the architect. Walk through the blue door and continue to face yet more failures at saving those closest to you. Your race will live on borrowed time, and will... Yeah, blah, blah, blah. ...wind up extinct. Walk through the red door, however, and I will release the humans whom I have collected. What? I will give them amnesty, and even a ship from my fleet to do with as they see fit. However, in choosing this door, you will willingly submit yourself to execution. What? Whoa, 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 wait. Wait, is he serious? No, that can't be right. He wouldn't really do that, would he? What the hell is all this? Save killers. What? Cause more suffering. Well, I guess when you put it like that. I mean, I was ready to just go strolling through the blue door, but. Ah. Uh, that wouldn't really kill me going through the red door, would it? That's just a joke, right? Oh my god, this is actually really tough. This is like the hardest twist I've had to make in a video game. God. Oh my god. You know what, I don't want to listen to Zinyak because I know he's filling my head with a bunch of bullshit, but it's hard not to because it kind of makes some sense. Ugh. I want to make the sacrifice, but I feel like it's a trap. I don't know, that was really tough, though. I, I gotta say, the game- whoa, what the hell? Oh my god, yes, a text adventure, I love these. Uh, what do you do? Uh, approach the computer. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> uh, okay, well, so I just- I just gotta go through until I finally pick the right answers, I guess. It doesn't really matter what I do here. What am I? I'm a slave. Uh, wait, how the hell did I end up in outer space? Is this just going to be, like, really random and erratic? Um, found something, what do you do? <laughs> Launch a probe. Sounds wrong for some reason. Um, what the hell am I supposed to do here? I mean, the only thing I haven't done is fly towards the purple star, but that doesn't sound right. I think I'd burn up, wouldn't I? Uh, let's try it. Enter the purple star? Oh, wow. Oh, hey, it's an Edgar Allan Poe reference. The Raven and the Pit and the Pendulum, and I don't know what the skeleton is supposed to represent, but whatever. It's a raven. Why does the pirate have a raven? Oh my god, I love this little dialogue with Zinyak. It's great. Must you continue to display your plebeian intelligence? Oh my god, I love what a thespian this guy is. He's so well read on human literature for somebody who seems to hate humans so much. Uh, let's see. Whoa, whoa, oh my goodness now. Well, baby. 
forget about saving Matt Miller. How about you and me blow this popsicle stand? And then later you can blow my popsicle stand, if you know what I'm saying. Ow. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> um... Okay, what the hell? I want to rescue Matt Miller, I guess. Well, I want to destroy Zinyak too, but anyway. Just pick up the phone and we'll get you out of there, Matt. Oh my god. Matt Miller's most feared opponents. Okay. Oh, whoa, what the fuck? Killbane? Whoa, that's kind of cool, actually. So Matt's biggest fear is Killbane. Okay, that's starting to make sense. So what Zinyak must have done is just trapped these guys in with whatever their worst nightmare is and forced them to live through it. So that would make sense for Matt Miller to be Killbane. Although that makes me wonder, if we're going to go and save everyone else, does that mean we're going to get to find out what their biggest fears are? Because that'd be kind of fun, actually. I'd like to see what that is for everyone. Um, I got the feeling I can guess some of them. Like, for Sean D, it'd probably be something like, uh... Maybe her psycho ex-boyfriend from Saints Row 2. I don't really know what she's afraid of. Or maybe she's just afraid of getting kidnapped, because it seemed to happen every damn game. Oh, yay, Matt, you did it, buddy. Nice. Alrighty, let's get out of here. Pick up the phone. Alright, cool, we saved Matt Miller. Cool, cool beans. Although, I really wonder what would have happened if I had sacrificed myself. I almost want to go back and do that, too. Maybe I'll put that at the end of the video. Wait, we just left him there? What the fuck? Oh, I did. I'm just not a big fan of Matt. Come on! Can't I get some payback? Got a little lost, big deal. Or he got a little dead, who knows? Oh, he's fine. He's probably having the time of his life exploring Zinyak's ship. Oh god, this is naked Raiden right here. Oh my god, he must be scared shitless. Okay, I feel a little bit bad for him. Just a little bit. God, he still has his fucking Bluetooth ear set, that's great. Miller space complete! That is really ugly to look at. Okay, cool, new level! Alright, cool beans. Well, I guess that means the next thing we have to do is actually infiltrate Zinyak's ship again and save him. Um, that's gonna be one hell of a job. But okay, at least we finally broke him out so he's back in the real world with us. But um, anyway guys, it's time for me to end off the episode, so I'd like to thank you guys for joining me again here today. Once again, my name is Jesus Quesadilla. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe to me, and that way you can stay updated anytime I post new videos to my channel. And um, I'll probably go back and record what would have happened if I had chose to sacrifice myself to Zinyak, uh, just to show you guys what that's like. So stick around after I wrap off the episode, and you'll be able to see that. But anyway, guys, it's been a whole lot of fun, and until next time, this is Jesus Quesadilla signing out and wishing you well. Peace! Alright, let's see what happens here. Before you, I place a choice. Walk through the blue door and continue to face yet more failures at saving those closest to you. Your race will live on borrowed time and will, through your violent arrogance, wind up extinct. Walk through the red door, however, and I will release the humans who... God, no way I look at this. This just seems like a really bad trap. Maybe we, like, fight our way out of it or something like that. Or we pretend to sacrifice ourselves, but we don't really let it happen. I don't know. You would willingly submit yourself to execution. Okay, well, for the good of humanity, guys, we're going to make the ultimate sacrifice. of humanity. Or its absolute destroyer. Yeah, you know what, Zinyak, you're right. Gotta get myself up for the good of everybody else. Let's do it. Let's take the plunge. Uh, what? What the fuck? <laughs> what? Well, I just beat the game, guys. That's it for the Let's Play. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Um, next time I'll play... Wait, wait, what the fuck? Really? The credits just start to roll? That's actually a lot funnier than I thought. Wait, this is just a joke, right? It's going to take me back to the game, isn't it? Well, cool. I beat the game. That was a whole lot of fun. Hold on a second. Animations Eric Butt? He has a very unfortunate last name. Um, is there a way for me to, like, stop these? Okay, cool. Um, you chose poorly. <laughs> okay, yeah, mission failed. Kind of expected that. Oh, well. Thanks for checking this out. I'll catch you later. Peace.